Hey there, this is Jamie, and welcome to our first project video this semester in BA322 Business Analytics at Humboldt State University. Uh, in this project, we're going to work on gathering some data from a website. This process is called web scraping, and we're actually going to use the free tool provided by Google Chrome. Um, it's Google Chrome's web scraper. There are instructions in the project description on how to download it, but if you just stumbled across this, a Google search will do it. Um, I'm going to assume that you have the scraper and you're ready to go. Um, so we're going to open the scraper and get started. To get the scraper open, you start with the three dot menu on the upper right hand side of your browser. You'll click on that. You'll scroll down to more tools. Then you'll slide on over and click on developer tools. This big busy box is going to open to the right and just to make it easier we're going to move it to the bottom. You do that with another three dot menu. We're going to customize and control the developer tools. And we're going to take this dock side option and we're going to move that dock to the bottom. This makes it a lot easier to deal with. And then here's web scraper. We're going to open it. So to start with the web scraper, we have to tell the web scraper how to move through a web page and what particular pieces of information to collect and how it should store that information. So we're going to tell it how to move, what it's looking at, and what it needs to collect. To get started, you're just going to go to zappos.com and you could scrape the whole site. It would take you a really long time. So we're going to just you know, try to be practical here and we're going to maybe be boring. I don't know, but we're looking at men's road running shoes. So under men, sneakers and athletics shoes. And then we're going to scroll down and we're going to restrict our subcategory to running shoes. But then even more specific, we're going to further restrict that subcategory to road running shoes. Based on the inventory on Zappos today, there are 993 men's road running shoes for sale at the moment. That includes some, you know, that have multiple colors in the same style. Those are still listed as multiple shoes. But I want to focus this down a little bit to just be efficient on our first go with this tool. Um, and I want to reduce it to brands that have 65 or more models. So Adidas Running has 99 models. We're going to take it. And then ASICS has 126 models. I'm going to click on that. And so I'm just going to work down, taking every brand, clicking on every brand of shoe that has at least 65 models. So Brooks, Hoka, New Balance, Nike, 65 gets a Saucony, but not Under Armour. You're just going to pick 65 brands or more on whatever day you are scraping a web page. So now for me today, there's 685 shoes. You'll have something quite close to that. It'll say men's running shoes, and then we're going to sort by brand name. And each time we change that sort, or each time we change the search, our URL changes. And so this URL is going to tell the scraper exactly where to start. And just to get a sense of what we're doing, I want you to scroll down to the bottom, look at all the shoes, and then we've got to see how many pages we have. Because if our pages, if our shoes are across multiple pages, we need to tell the scraper that it needs to look at all the pages. It can't stop at the first one. So here we've got seven pages. And then to see how the pagination is done or how the, the pagination is specified, on the first page, I scroll to the end of the URL and I don't see anything. So if the web page tells us or, or the, the directions that it gives for moving through the pages is at the end. And so there's nothing here on the first page. So I'm going to go to the last page. And on that last page, it says P equals 6. I'm going to copy this URL and I'm going to adjust that to say pages 0 to 6 because when there's 7 pages, the last one's 6, that means the first one starts at 0. If you're doing a different web page, it'll often take a Google search to figure out how to adjust for 
and include the correct pagination reference in your sitemap. So let's start. We're going to start here by creating a new sitemap. Create sitemap. And it wants two things. It wants its name and it wants the URL. And that's the place it starts. If your start URL is not correct, you'll have to start over on the scraping. That might sound alarming. Expect to start over on the scraping a bunch of times. This is actually the third time I've tried to record this video. I've been in here for hours. Give yourself hours. It's actually not so bad once you get going. Um, and it's a powerful data collection tool. And oftentimes data collection can be challenging, but when you can start telling stories in the information that you get, it's also really rewarding. So down here on the start URL, like I mentioned, we have to adjust the pagination. We've got to tell it to collect data on pages zero to six. And so to do that, we use a hard bracket and then we type zero dash six. You might want to zoom in so you can see that bracket, but it's the one directly above the return key and the quotation marks and you don't push shift to get there. And then we create our sitemap. This, this term here, underscore root, refers to that web page. So the scraper now knows that it's going to start on that web page that we specified. And now we have to tell it what to do on those web pages. So I'm going to go back to that first page. And if I'm on my first page and you're on your first page, we should at least have something kind of similar, right? You're going to be looking at an Adidas running shoe, possibly even the alpha bounce in a different color, or maybe in this color, because there's alpha bounce in three colors. So now we're telling, we want to tell the scraper that we want information on each shoe. And the thing that we want information on each of, that's our primary unit of analysis. Each row in our spreadsheet will have information on a shoe. In the scraper language, that is the element. The element is our primary unit of analysis. So we need to tell it that we want information on each shoe. And because there are 700 or 600 or however many hundreds of shoes, we need to select this box here that's called multiple. And then we check this button select, we push on it, and we click the first shoe, we click the second shoe. We don't have to click all the shoes because check it out, it clicks them up for us. We get the first few done and it does the rest. Yes. Then we tell it we're done selecting and we save the selector. So the next piece of information we need, we actually need a lot of information, but we can't access it right here. The way the Zappos page is set up, I'd love to get how many people favorited the shoe. That would tell us about popularity and I'd love to get this 3.7 number, but the scraper doesn't allow it. So all the information we need, we have to have the scraper follow the link to the product page of the shoe. So we have to tell it to follow that link, and then we have to follow that link. So from the main web page that's our root, we want it to focus on each shoe. And then for each shoe, we want it to follow the link. So I'm going to click on the word shoe, and it's going to be moved up here. From each web page, we're going to go to each shoe. From each shoe, we're going to go to a link. Now I have to tell it to go to that link. I'm going to call it link to shoe page, or just link to shoe. And under type, it's a link. So it's not going to return any data. It actually will return the web page, but we'll delete that. We want it to just go to that web page. And each shoe has only one link. So we are not going to click multiple. And then we say that we're done selecting and we save the selector. Now for each shoe, we follow the link and now we're going to click on this link button here so that the link to shoe moves here. And now we're going to collect a bunch of stuff from that link. So now I'm going to click on the link. It's going to take me to this new page and I'm going to want information on um, the brand, the model, the price. And then I also want to know what percentage of people say it's true to size and what percentage of people say it's true to width. From there, we'll follow another link to the reviews. 
and we'll collect the percentage of people who gave it five stars. We could collect all, but our scraper will run for a really long time. And I want all the comfort ratings and all the style ratings because you know you want to know. What's more important? Do people rate shoes more highly if they're more comfortable or do they rate them more highly if they're stylish? Are we vain or are we all about function? I mean, I don't know. So let's get back to our link to our shoe. We send it to this link and our map here should say root shoe link to shoe. And then we're going to say, I need some info. I want to know the brand. I want the brand referred returned to me as text in one of those boxes in Excel. I'm going to click select and I'm going to click on Adidas running and it's going to put that in a cell in Excel. Done. Save. Then on this link page, we're going to stay on that same link page. I'm going to add a new selector, model. It's going to be text. I'm going to select it, model. Boom, return those words in a cell. Done. Save. Let's do another one. Let's do price. Price, text, return a price, return that $100 in an Excel spreadsheet. Done. Save. And then two last things, true to size or true to width. Like, you know, do, people, do shoes that run small or really wide or narrow, are those shoes that people rank less overall, right? So I'm not sure. So let's grab a new selector. We're going to call this true to size. It's text, 89%. Boom, done selecting. And then we're going to do true to width, which I'm going to call TTW. I'm ignoring moderate arch support because I don't really know what that means. Is moderate enough? Is moderate not enough? Is moderate, you know, I don't know. That's a weird one. So our next selector is going to be the last link to our second and last link. We're going to link to the reviews and we're going to call it link to reviews. It is a link and I'm going to select it. Each shoe has only one link and it's by clicking on that little field. Done. And now link to reviews. So I want the scraper to collect a bunch of information from the link to shoe then I want it to go to the link to review. So I've got to click the link to review, and then this is, you know, shows the progression of how it's going to move across the web page. And then I've got to go to that page and tell it from the selector what do I want? I want the percent five stars. And then I want all the comfort stars and all the style stars. Add new. So here I'm going to call it comfort and it's text but it's multiple because on each shoe can have multiple reviews for comfort. So like we did when we were identifying the shoes we click two or as many as we need to. Eventually they should all highlight on their own. Sometimes it only takes two. Sometimes you have to scroll all the way down. In this case I had to scroll all the way down. Let's see if it's any better when we do style. I'm going to save that selector and try again to get my style stars. It's text. It's multiple. I'm going to start at the top. And then that time, it did highlight them all. But you have to check, otherwise you don't know what's going to happen. Done selecting. Right, and that has actually told the scraping tool everything it needs to know. Once you've done that, you're going to go to this selector graph. And by looking at the selector graph, we can see if we've got it set up right. And it should look like this. Our root has a blue dot because it's a parent category. It's the parent to the shoe, which is that main unit of analysis. There's a lot of them, right? 
But for each one of those shoes, we're going to follow the link to the shoe page where there's all the data that we'll collect on the brand, the model, the price, whether it's true to size, whether it's true to width. And then we'll follow the link to the reviews. And then we'll collect information on the percent that have five stars or the percent of reviewers that gave it five stars, the comfort stars and the style stars. And if your map looks like that, you're ready to scrape. If it doesn't, you can go back and try to fix it. But once you've entered it a few times, it goes real fast. And so I usually just say start over. Up to you. Then if you scroll back down and see this site map Zappos Men's, you go down here to scrape. And it will say start scraping. And you're going to click start scraping. And the scraper is going to open in another window. Don't close it. If you close it, the scraper will stop. So I usually just take it, I wait it for a minute to watch it move through its paces. You'll see it follow. It will go to the page, the shoe page, and then it'll go again to the review page and it'll be collecting the data. Then you minimize it, but don't close it. If you're not going to be on your computer while this happens, I recommend adjusting your power saving mode so that your computer doesn't go to sleep while it's plugged into an outlet. To do that on my Mac, I go to System Preferences, and then under my Energy Saver button, I can adjust how long it takes before it turns off the display. I leave it how it is on battery, but I'll plug this into my computer and make sure that it'll just turn the display off. I drag this all the way to the right. I mean, never letting your display go to sleep may shorten its life, but for one day, you know, it's not going to hurt anything, and having your scraping work the first time may lengthen your life, so it's okay, computer. On the scraper, on the page where we're running the scraper, you can see if it's scraping data by clicking refresh. You can also see how the data is going by exporting the data as CSV. When the scraper is done running, the scraping box will disappear and you'll come back to this screen and click export data as CSV. Once the file has been generated, a download link will appear here, download now. If you download it before the scraper is running, you'll get a partial data set. So as long as the scraper is running in the side, you just need to wait. And that's it, I think, for what I want to tell you now. We're going to meet on for office hours on at least this semester there Monday. Check your syllabus if we're no longer on whatever this semester is, fall 2020. Um, and I look forward to chatting with you and hearing your process about scraping this web page because um, it can be a little testing in the beginning, but it's a super fun and powerful tool and it will really give us a unique and interesting data set to experiment with uh, using real world data as we explore the tools from this class. So I hope you find it fun because, you know, I really do enjoy it. Talk to you soon and happy scraping.